Hello, Power Rangers Lightning Collection fans, and welcome back to the next chapter of the Lightning Library. This is the series where we take an in-depth look at every entry in the Power Rangers Lightning Collection, go over its history, and then take a look at every piece of it. Today, we are taking a look at the final wave that came out in 2020, Wave 7. And this is one of the weirdest waves we've had so far, as it only includes three brand new figures and one re-released figure. Now, this is the first wave that I did videos on, like first impression unboxing videos on back when it came out. And I've done that with every Lightning Collection release since then. So this point forward in the you know videos on this series, they're not really going to be super in-depth reviews of these figures since I've already kind of done videos on these before. However, those videos did not include the history aspect of them. And this video is definitely going to include that. And we will take a look at them, of course. So Wave 7 includes the Dino Thunder Red Ranger, the Mighty Morphin Green Ranger, and a Z Putty, as well as a re-release of Mighty Morphin White from Wave 1. Now, there's also the Spectrum versions of these figures released exclusively at Target in the fall, which we will be taking a look at at the end of the video. But just to give you a real quick breakdown of the Cases Tournament, this wave had three Dino Thunder Reds, two of the Mighty Morphin White restock, two Mighty Morphin Greens, and our Army Builder, the Z Putty, was one per case because... I don't know. So let's go ahead and take a look at the history of this and then we will go over each figure individually. At the start of the summer of 2020, the next batch of listings for the mainline waves would be found. On Thursday, June 4th, 2020, I found four new listings in the Walmart system. Lum Earth, Rad Neptune, LGY Jupiter, and ZCH Mercury. These were the first listings under the second code system for the Lightning Collection. This was not known to be the case for sure at the beginning, but hints such as the price points being correct and then being four products in a group together seemed to point in that direction. Two days later, I found a similar group of listings, BLM Mars, Lum Jupiter, SRE Mercury, and ZTH Radar. These ones had earlier product numbers, and therefore if they were going to end up being Lightning Collection, they were likely Wave 7. As the summer progressed and more and more listings were being found not from the main waves, at Power Ranger Talk would scan these potential Wave 7 listing barcodes at Target and they ended up coming up as Hasbro action figures at 1999, which seemed to help prove that they were in fact for the Lightning Collection. Since Wave 6 wasn't even revealed until August, it would be a little while until any updates happened on Wave 7 items. As mentioned in the last chapter, most of Wave 6 would leak via photos of the figures sitting on a laptop keyboard on Saturday, August 8, 2020. With MMPR Black, In Space Yellow, and Zeo Red from this leak going on to release in Wave 6, there was still the MMPR Green that was also leaked by this photo, and was now a prime choice for one of the Wave 7 codes. In trying to figure out the codes, some turned to another batch of listings that leaked at the same time. These were four basic figure listings, DRM Jupiter, DRM Earth, DRM Neptune, and DRM Villain. As it turned out, looking for clues in this wave led us right in the right direction. These four listings ended up becoming the first wave of Dino Fury basic figures, though that would not be revealed until long after Wave 7's reveal. It was assumed that the planets in particular matched up to colors, with Jupiter being assumed to be red since it was the only planet to pop up in both lightning waves and the basic waves. Since Rue Soldier was a Sentai that started out with red, blue, and pink, this led to the assumption that the Earth and Neptune codes would be for blue and pink, which didn't really help in the Wave 7 speculation, but it would be handy later on in the Wave 8 codes. The month of September would bring with it plenty of Wave 7 leaks, by that time, it was revealed that Hazard PulseCon would be taking place at the end of the month, and by the time that the convention rolled around, not only was the wave known, it was already released. Towards the end of August, YouTuber MCU Collector 24 stated in one of their Wave 6 reviews that a source had told them Wave 7 would consist of MMPR Green, MMPR White, Dino Thunder Red, and a Z Putty. Um, this might be breaking news, but Wave 7, I hear. Wave 7 is going to be a Z putty patroller, so the Lord Zed putty. Um, we are going to get a Green Ranger, Mighty Morphin Green Ranger, so that is cool. Another Tommy Oliver. This one will be the proper version and not the Fighting Spirit Green Ranger, so that would be cool. 
Um, the other one that's going to be coming in that wave is going to be a Dino Thunder Red Ranger. So we've been getting um, a couple of the figures now, or that will make the second. The white uh, Ranger from Dino Thunder was the Walgreens exclusive. We are getting that Red Ranger. And then... Um, a repack of the Mighty Morphin White Ranger. So that, don't shoot the messenger, please. That's what's coming out in Power Rangers. On September 7th, a bill of lading would show the Lum Jupiter figure on the way to the US, along with MMPR White. Lum Jupiter, by this point, was assumed to be the Dino Thunder Red for the wave, and with MMPR White appearing before it, that seemed to back up MCU Collector 24's claim of it reappearing in this wave after coming out all the way back in Wave 1. The next day, No Pink Spandex backed up this rumored lineup, and with it being heard and posted from numerous sources, it seemed to be more and more legit. Dino Thunder Red was fully confirmed on September 10th, when I was sent pictures of the figure from one of my sources. Now half of the rumored lineup had been seen through leaked photos, MMPR White was already seen on that bill of lading, and all that meant was that the Z Putty was the last one that needed proof of its existence. You can almost see and I'm looking at this again, there's almost kind of a perfect circle molded out of there. Like it's meant to clip around the Z on their chest. I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm finding some little breadcrumbs here. I'm finding some breadcrumbs. I think that the Z putties might be sooner than we think. I think these were definitely made with them in mind. So we'll see, time will tell, but I'm, I'm finding some breadcrumbs here. That proof seemed to come in the form of an earlier release, as YouTuber Lawn's Toys pointed out in their review of the Putty Patroller 2-pack that the chest blast effect piece appeared to have a circular cutout that would be perfect for the Z-emblem on the Z-Putty chest. Not long after this discovery, the 2-pack code was found to be SRE Raider 2-pack. This helped place SRE as the season code for MMPR, placing SRE Mercury as the code for MMPR Green, and placed Radar as Putty helping place ZTH Radar as the Z Putty. The only code not cracked by this point in the wave was BLM Mars. Though with the leak of a BLM Jupiter vs Lava 2 pack coming, and information that seemed to make that pack be In Space Red vs Astronema, it was assumed BLM was the code for In Space, and then Black was the leading guest for what Mars was going to be. By the end of the month, it was the week of Hasbro's Con. Dino Thunder Red was 100% confirmed as Lum Jupiter, thanks to a new bill of lading on September 21st, and on September 22nd, all of the codes except for the BLM Mars listing would unlock on Walmart's site and decode themselves, showing Dino Thunder Red, MMPR Green, and the Zeo Putty, as the Z Putty was incorrectly listed as. On Thursday, September 24th, only two days before Pulsecom, the first look at the wave in box would appear on the eBay shop of CMD store. They had the whole wave as well as MMPR White, which finally confirmed to just be a restock of the original Wave 1 release, with nothing different. Fans were able to purchase these figures from CMD store, and video reviews of them were up before the official reveal even took place. Finally, on September 26th, the wave was fully revealed during Hazard PulseCon. This reveal confirmed that Dino Thunder Red would include the Tyranno staff, which was hiding behind the box art and people were worried he wouldn't have, as well as an awkward question about the lack of diamonds under the shield of MMPR Green during the Q&A session. While Wave 7 was finally revealed, Hasbro still had a trick up their sleeve with this wave, as the final reveal of the day was the Wave 7 Target Exclusive Spectrum series, which would see the three new figures and restock of MMPR White get a special box release with new artwork done by series illustrator Tom Whalen. There were no details on exactly when these would release, but it was later found out that those who pre-ordered Wave 7 after the event from Target.com were actually pre-ordering the Spectrum ones despite them not knowing it. Now that Wave 6 and 7 were revealed at the Jez show of Toku Toy Store would come out and share listings that they had for the Wave originally. As discussed last week at one point in time, there was the code SPC Golf Romeo in the place of the Ice Yankee Romeo code in Wave 6. This was based off of the old code system, which would have made SPC Golf Romeo MMPR Green that ended up showing up in Wave 7. Wave 7 is the only wave to date to not have 4 new figures, plus the listing for BLM Mars never showed up in this wave that it was grouped in. Eventually, BLM Mars would be released in Wave 9 and it did end up being in space black, though it's unknown why he was delayed two whole waves. 
These original Wave 7 listings that were posted by the Just Show after PulseCon were originally told to me confidentially in June of 2020 when the Walmart Wave 7 listings were found and helped influence certain assumptions I had about the codes. At one point in time, Wave 7 consisted of codes under the older code system, Ice Buckeye Romeo, which was in the same slot that became BLM Mars, with both codes having stood for In Space Black. DTW Roger Romeo was assumed to still be Dino Thunder Red, which left the other two codes quite changed. These two codes, Sal Cell Romeo, which would have been an SPD Ranger of an unknown color, as Cell was never used prior in the old code system, and the fan desired BDY Yankee Romeo, which would have been Beast Morphers Yellow. These two codes were kicked from the wave when the wave switched code names, and things got moved around, and we'll probably never know why this ended up happening. Finally, the wave would start appearing in the US at Target in October, but in the regular packaging. A month later, the Spectrum ones would start to show up as well, but have mostly disappeared as it has been months since their release and they were intended on being limited items. This wave to this day is one of the weirdest and hardest ones to get all of. The wave didn't even release in the UK until only about a month ago at the time of this video. Dino Thunder Red is easy to get, but MMPR Green is quite a rare figure to get, and with the Z-Putty being not only an army builder, but also the one per case of the wave, he is often out of stock. Alright, first up is Connor here. Now looking at the render to the figure itself, it looks pretty solid. Now the figure suffers from the same problem that we'll have with Ethan in Wave 8. The visor trim is silver on him when it should be white, and it is white here on the box. So the box is accurate, the figure is not on that aspect. But looking like what you actually get with it, it does look like the Thunder Max Saber is a little darker of a blue here, probably a more show accurate darker of a blue than this kind of lighter blue that we get here. Uh, but it's not too bad. Same thing with the blaster, I guess, as well. But yeah, besides that, it's pretty much the same, you know, between figure and render here. Uh, but taking a look at the box, of course, here, you got the render. You got Tom's box art there, which has a lot of weird, like, white space there that's more than normal. And of course, Dino Thunder Red Ranger and the Dino Thunder logo and such. So let's go ahead and take a look at Connor here more in depth. So it's pretty good. I there goes his head, but I think for the most part, it's definitely a good figure, definitely a solid one. I think that the Dino Thunder mold, they've done a pretty good job with. We've had it with Ethan, and I, for the most part, assume we can use it mostly with, uh, if we ever get Dr. O, which I'm sure we will soon enough here. But uh, he has a lot of accessories, and that's what's really nice about this figure's release here. Uh, so you already saw he, he's basically using all of them in his pose. Uh, so you get the Thunder Max Saber, which we can go ahead and take out of his hand, and the Thunder Max Blaster, which the render has them like at the same time, but that wouldn't make any sense because they're the same thing. But here is the Thunder Max Saber. I think that looks pretty solid, maybe a little too light of a blue. But we also have the Thunder Max Blaster, which is very nice detailing, looks very nice. I'm glad they get both versions of it. And we get this brand new effect piece that we've only had with Dino Thunder Red so far. This like really cool flame effect piece that I really do dig. So that's pretty sweet. And then the big point, the big thing he needs to have had was the Tyranno Staff. So thankfully he does have this definitely underpainted for sure. It cannot transform into the Xerox Blaster configuration. It cannot combine with the Tricera Shield that Ethan brings us in Wave 8. Uh, it also doesn't have all the white diamonds that go down along it, but you do have the T-Rex mouth there and everything. You do get a little bit of gold paint at the tip of it, and I just threw it on the ground. So there's that. <laughs> but moving on to his hands here, he does have white little triangles painted on there, which Ethan will not have. But uh, it's just kind of like a blaster kind of hand, kind of a pointing hand. They're both kind of just variations of holding hands, so nothing too crazy there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that is Connor. At least he does have his Morpher plate molded on there with the T-Rex and everything. So that looks good. We can go ahead and swap the head here to include the Connor head that you get with it. And uh, I think that from certain angles, the Connor head is okay. It's definitely not one of the best helmets, helmets, head sculpts that we've had in the line for sure. But I don't think it's horrible but I can definitely see where it's not exactly a great representation of Connor. But, you know, I think it's decent. But, you know, the waves have just been getting better with this. And uh, even the next head sculpt we're going to take a look at with Mighty Morphin Green is 
really good. So let's go ahead and move on to Mighty Morphin Green. All right, so here's one of our widely anticipated figures from the Lightning Collection that took us all the way to Wave 7, our final core Mighty Morphin member, Mighty Morphin Green. So it is really nice to finally get this here. This is supposed to be kind of more based off of Tommy during his Green with Evil uh, arc, because you get the Sword of Darkness and everything. Uh, so, well, obviously it can just be a perfectly fine regular Season 1, Season 2 MMPR Green. It's definitely supposed to be more based off of that arc. Uh, but looking at the render to the figure, Pretty much, I would say, is like identical. I don't really see anything too different. The render definitely has a lot darker of a green effect piece than the one you actually get for the Sword of Darkness, uh, which we'll take a look at there. Uh, it's not a new one, but it is a new shade of green, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, but looking at the front here, obviously, you have Tom's artwork of Mighty Morphin Green. It says Mighty Morphin Green. Get the Mighty Morphin logo there. Get a nice artwork there. Love the Mighty Morphin Green suit. Definitely a great one. And uh, the figure itself is also very good. It does have its problems, obviously. The same problems that everyone else has pointed out with this figure. But, I mean, essentially this is the, what, fourth time? Fourth time that this figure got released? The mold, at least. Because uh, after Armored Red and Armored Black in 2019, and Fighting Spirit Green in 2019, this was like, you know, <laughs> we had seen it before. Obviously, there is some new things to it where, like, the holster is on the right, is on the correct side this time. Fighting Spirit has it on the right side, but like you know, it's Ron in Dino Thunder, uh, but here it's you know correct. So uh, comparing it there, it's good. But uh, the Morpher is also gold as it should be. It's white on the Fighting Spirit, which is accurate there. Actually, it should be silver there, but you know it's close enough. Uh, you get the shield, which I think is maybe a little bit of a darker gold than the three other times we had it before. Although that could, you know. I don't know, just be mine or something. It definitely seems like it's a little bit of a darker gold. The Dragon Dagger, you get it by this point. It has come with a million figures. I think I have like six or seven of the Dragon Dagger around my collection here. Uh, the Sword of Darkness is the same one that came with Fighting Spirit Green. But the effect piece, while it's the same exact style of effect piece, is a lot of a lighter shade of green. The one we got with Fighting Spirit Green is a lot... It was a light green as well, but this is a lot more kind of like a lime green, kind of, more kind of like a neon green, and that was a little bit more of a darker shade, but still light, you know, neither one of them are the same kind of like dark green shade that was on the 3D render back there, so that's kind of interesting, but obviously the biggest problems with this figure that everyone always points out is the fact that the entire helmet has silver around there, so they didn't bother to just do like silver teeth and then the white visor trim as it should have. And they just went all silver on there. And of course, the big one, the fact that the diamonds are not painted underneath the shield. The, you can see the white in the butterfly joint there, but they are not painted underneath here when they were on the other three releases. So I don't know what happened with that. You, you would think that they would want to make arguably the most popular Ranger design of all time a good and accurate figure. And, but then they mess up the helmet and they mess up the chest like that. Very strange. But I still don't think that that really hinders this figure too badly. It's definitely a rare figure. It's hard to get this one. It's often not in stock. But I think it is a really good figure if you can get your hands on it. And I mean, it's exactly what you expect, especially if you have Fighting Spirit Green and such like that. Now, his only other accessories that we don't already see from him holding is you get the Dragon Dagger playing hand, which previously only came with Fighting Spirit Green, so that makes sense. And then you just get a fist, a very typical Lightning Collection fist that we've had a million times. However, the head sculpt, they did bother to do a brand new season one, like, you know, headband style Tommy head sculpt. And I think if I can get it on there, I think it is really, really good. So let's go ahead and plug that in there. I think that looks phenomenal. I especially, I love the headband. I love the, the lawn hair a little bit on the back, that kind of mullet he has going on there. Oh, I just love it. It's really cool to also get like an accessory on a, you know, a head, you know, the headband there. I mean, we had like glasses with Billy and things like that, but like Nate from Beast Morphers should have had glasses and he didn't and things like that. So it's cool to see us get, you know, different kinds of styles of heads there, especially with Tommy. We have like season one Tommy, we have season two, we have Zeo, we have Draken. So I'm sure we'll get more and more Tommies as the line continues, but uh yeah, I think that's a pretty good likeness as well, too. I just think it looks pretty cool, and it's definitely one of my favorite heads. I'm happy they went through the uh, extra mile to give us a new head for Season 1, Green with Evil Tommy. So, let's move on to the Z-Putty. 
finally, for the new figures in this wave, we have the Z Putty from Season 2. So following off of us getting the regular putty in that Fighting Spirit Green Putty set and in the Putty 2 pack, this was a pretty easy one for Hasbro to do here. So it's a cool one. It's definitely a neat one to have, especially having another army builder in the line. And I do like this figure, especially if you get multiples of them, you get really cool effect pieces to use over and over again. Uh, but looking at the render to the figure, pretty much the same. I mean, I think this might be a little bit of a lighter blue here, kind of more of a translucent blue than we actually get, but that could just be the weirdness of the 3D render. You can also see that they definitely painted the face a lot darker this time than they did on the render and on the original putty. The original putty just had like an all regular, same kind of gray as the rest of the figure kind of color. Uh, but uh, this looks good though, I really do like that. Uh, but taking a look at the front artwork and everything, of course, Tom Whalen's artwork, all that stuff there. Exactly what you would expect it to look like. Still a lot of white space up there, just like on the other ones, which is just kind of strange. But we'll put that box off to the side there. So taking a look at the Z Putty here, it's a very basic figure. We'll go ahead and take the effect pieces off. This is the same one you got with the Putty Patroller 2 pack, with like, you can see the little circle indent for the Z in there and everything. Uh, but this is the first time we've had it in blue. So that's pretty cool. We are getting it again with the cogs. Uh, so that's going to be kind of fun when we do get that. Uh, but yeah, we get it with blue here, kind of a nice dark blue. And then we get another effect piece we've had before, but not in this color. We had this in blue before with Beast Morphers Blue. And now we have it in this kind of orangish red. And we're getting it in purple with the cogs later on this year. So that's pretty cool. I definitely like that. You don't get any like the knife hand or the ball hand that the other putties came with. Uh, you get kind of like a kind of a claw hand, kind of a sort of a holding hand there. Uh, but then for swappable hands, you get kind of a sort of holding hand for his left hand. And then you get a closed fist for his right hand. Uh, so nothing too crazy there. And take a look at the figure itself. You have the Z, kind of the sports bra going on there. Uh, you get the little, I never noticed that Z putties had like laces on the boots there. But uh, it's really cool. And they do, it's accurate. I just I never really noticed it until this figure happened and they get the Z's on the knees. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's a really good figure and uh, it's definitely a fun one to army build. So <laughs> I always army build with three of a lightning collection figure. So here's three Z putties there. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a good one if you can find it. Since it is one per case, it is harder to get, especially harder to army build. But uh, I would definitely recommend it to go with your Lord Zed or your regular putties or with your Rita or Goldar, or, you know, anyone you want to uh, pose these with. They're definitely a fun inclusion, especially if you can get a regular putty, this, and the Tanga. You can have all three of the Mighty Morphin foot soldiers, so that's pretty sweet. Now, finally, for the wave, we did have the re-release of Mighty Morphin White here. This one is one from the Wave 7 restock. I just bought one to have the first figure in the entire collection sealed in box, because Mighty Morphin White was figure number one, all the way back in Wave 1. So... This, like I said, is the exact same one. If you guys would like to see a more in-depth look at how this is the exact same thing as the Mighty Morphin original one, uh, there is a video that will be popping up here I did a couple months ago that compares this one to the original Wave 1 one to the Spectrum one. Uh, but yeah, it is the exact same. There were, there were promo pictures that came out uh, that made people believe that the Saba was missing paint on the coin there and such like that, but that was just an older picture that came out back when Wave 1 happened and got recircled around during Wave 7 and made people think that there was differences. Some people claim that there's like different shades of the gold on the paint, or on the paint, on the box art and everything. And by that might be true, it could just be, you know, the way yours was printed. Mine does have a slight different in the shade there. But you can probably pick, probably pick up two of the exact same figure from like a current Wave and see differences in the box shading. So. That's not an actual difference. There is no difference between the Wave 1 and the Wave 7 one. People will claim otherwise, but th there is no difference. So, <laughs> the same barcode, same product number. If you bought the restock Money Morphin White during Wave 7, you basically got the exact same thing as Wave 1. You just didn't get it from the same exact production run. That's really it. So, let's go ahead and right before we wrap this up here, take a look at the infamous Wave 7 Spectrums. All right, so here are the Wave 7 Target exclusive Spectrum series, which at the time we thought were going to be the only Spectrums until the Monsters and Versus Packs Wave 1 each had them as well. Now, I've kept these sealed in box because they are supposed to be rare limited edition versions and I really don't need 
to open up. I mean, I have three Mighty Morphin Whites now. I don't need to open up a second one or a third one. I don't need to open up another Donna Thunder Red. I have all the Z putties I need, so I guess I technically have four Z putties. I guess I'm not going to open this one. But yeah, I mean, these do look very, very pretty. I do love the look of the Spectrum packages, but I hate the concept of the Spectrum packages because I didn't want to have to rebuy everything, especially since it is literally just different packaging. But it is a pretty packaging. You have this, you can already tell from the camera, you have this nice, like, reflective foil there, and that is all around these boxes. It's on the top, it's on the sides, it's on the back. Uh, it's not on the bottom, but, you know... The bottom, these are different barcodes, so they are unique things. They're not the same barcodes as the regular ones. The Spectrums are designated as their own thing. The product numbers are the same, though. So even though they are designated differently on the barcodes, the product numbers are the exact same. Now, you do get new Tom Whalen artwork compared to a typical Lightning Collection uh, Wave 7 box. For example, here's Mighty Morphin Green. You can see this is a typical white box with the kind of side, not fully sideways, but like kind of at an angle artwork that you get on a single release, while the Spectrum ones were fully side profiles. Uh, so, and that was the case on everything, except for Pumpkin Wrapper, since he would have been so weird if he had been a side profile. But yeah, I mean, the back artwork, the back 3D artwork is the exact same as the original releases of all of these, uh, you know, these ones being Wave 7, this one being Wave 1. And this was only here because of the fact that, you know, it got re-released in Wave 1. So it is kind of strange to get this one random Wave 1 Spectrum and then the three Wave 7 Spectrums. But since it is kind of a part of Wave 7, it can't, you know, it's weird. But yeah, I mean, this is definitely interesting. What is also kind of something to point out is that the Spectrums follow the same case assortment as the regular boxes back when you could find them. So three per case, two per case, two per case, one per case but you're really not gonna find these anymore. The Spectrum Versus Packs and Monsters clog up the shelves and targets, and I don't know if that's because no one wants them or the fact that to this day, Hasbro has never announced those two packs and Versus, uh, those Versus and Monsters Spectrums. They've been out for over six months and they've never been announced, so I don't know if that has some kind of contributing factor to them not selling. People don't know they exist, or I don't know. But these ones are pretty much gone. They were not in stores for very long. They were pretty hard for me to get, as you might have seen in my Spectrum Saga video I uploaded back in March. And they're just, they're an interesting novelty, but I, n I can't necessarily recommend them unless you really want everything or you really like the look of them. And I, like I said, I do love the look at them, so I do understand if you would want them just for aesthetic reasons. All right, that is going to do it for this week's chapter of the Lightning Library on Wave 7. This is a pretty interesting wave. I think it has some solid figures in it for sure. If you didn't get Mighty Morphin White back during wave one, you have that other chance here. Dino Thunder Red is great. So you're gonna need them for either a Red Ranger display or a Dino Thunder display. Mighty Morphin Green has its shortcomings, but it does complete the core team. It's a Tommy figure, arguably the most famous version of Tommy. The Z Putty is an army builder and everything. It's just definitely a weird wave of, of, for sure. I mean, it definitely has a lot of kind of reuse. I mean, literally reusing an entire figure, just re-releasing it. We haven't done that since in a main line. So, you know, that's kind of odd. I'm sure it will happen again someday, especially the longer that we go in this line. But, you know, that's kind of a, probably a hint of things to come. Mighty Morphin Green obviously is mostly reused. Dino Thunder Red is new because you have this the first time we've had this male Dino Thunder sculpt. We had Dino Thunder White before this, but he has a different sculpt and everything. And then of course, the Z Putty is basically using the regular Putty mold. But I don't think it's a bad wave, I just think it's a weird wave. It's one of those waves where like, it, it came out so close after wave six that it, I kind of feel like it got sort of over, overshadowed. Wave eight came out a couple months later, but then wave seven had already kind of disappeared. Wave six is more abundant than wave seven ever was. And so today, you find a lot more Wave 8 on the shelf and everything than you ever did with Wave 7. It took forever to come out in the UK. It was hard to get two of the three figures of it. One of them people didn't really even need if you got it back in Wave 1. Thank you all for watching this episode. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Living Ranger Key or at Lightning Fig PR. And I'll see you all next week for the next entry where we take a look at Monsters Wave 1.